Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at the menu system on the Canon T6i. I'm probably going to break it up into two different videos because there's a lot to go over. Um, there's a couple functions that's going to take us a while to get once we go into them. There's a lot of branches off of those functions to kind of explain and go over, kind of like the flash function. So what we're going to do is we're going to be putting our camera in the M mode. We're going to be going over the menu settings through the M mode. We're not going to go through all the menu settings of all the different modes on the dial, just the M mode. So what we want to do is we want to go on and turn our camera on. We want to make sure that we are sitting on the M mode on the dial. And then we want to go on and hit menu. Now remember, if you do have touchscreen enabled, you can use the touchscreen to jump through your menu settings, just to let you guys know. I don't really like the touchscreen that much. Uh, I just, I'm so used to using my normal menu systems that I just do it all by hand. So we're going to be looking at the red menu systems today uh, in this video, and we're going to go over both the blue uh, menu systems. So as you guys can see, we're going to go over six different menu systems, and then we'll work on knocking these out in the next video, the wrenches, and then the star there at the end, which is where you set up some custom functions. So let's get started. So the very first thing, as you can see, is going to be image quality. So what that has to do with, if you want to do raw, raw plus large, which large stands for JPEG, um, and then you can pick all these different settings. Now I shoot at raw, which is 6,000 by 4,000. Um, if I'm doing like a LR time lapse, I'm shooting time lapses through the app with a DSLR dashboard, then I'll have raw plus large. So what it will do is it will take a large JPEG file and a raw file at the same time, so you'll have both. Uh, but if I'm just shooting something, I'm gonna go with raw because I don't really wanna just uh, put a bunch of extra pictures. Mainly you're taking twice as many pictures with raw plus L. Um, and then if you go all the way over to just L, which is gonna be your JPEG. Um, again, it's gonna be the same size, but raw is gonna give you more, more ability to have control over how you want your finalized photo to look like once you put it into Photoshop or Lightroom or JPEG is already a compressed format. RAW is uncompressed. So I highly suggest that you always shoot RAW. All right, so we'll hit menu to go back. Now we're gonna go down to beep. Now you can turn your beep on and off, uh, especially with the touch screen. Um, I just enable it for now. If I need it to be quiet, I'll go on and turn it off for a specific situation. Shutter release without card, uh, it's enabled. It's up to you if you guys want that or not. Image review, I have it set at two seconds. And so pretty much what image review is gonna do for you is, is how long the image is going to stay up after you take the picture. Um, I have it set at two seconds. Lens abrasion correction. Okay, so uh, this can go over, this will help with your chromatic abrasion, your parallel aluminal as well as your distortion. If you have like barrel distortion, kind of where you see like a, a curved, almost like a fisheye look. Again, fisheye is different than barrel distortion. Um, I have a, uh, a 14 millimeter here and it's gonna be a little out of focus, but it's a 14 millimeter uh, Rokina uh, 2.8 and it does have a tad, tad bit of barrel distortion. So I could fix that in camera, but I really prefer to do that actually while I'm editing, um, I can do a better job in my opinion. I have a little more control. So I leave the, and we'll come back, open it back up here. Uh, I leave the, the barrel distortion disabled. It's up to you if you wanna use that or not. As well, I don't know if you noticed, but it lets you know uh, what lens you have. And so I have the Canon 50 millimeter 1.8 uh, version two on this camera at the moment. Red eye reduction, of course, you're going to want that enabled. I don't think anybody wants red eye. Uh, I remember a time and a day when red eye was in every shot, and it was so annoying, and there's nothing you could have done about it back in the very early stages of digital photography. And uh, now cameras fix that inside. Okay, so now we're going to go over flash control. This is going to take a minute to go over because there is a lot to go over with the flash control. So we're going to go on and open it up. And we've got a lot of different sub menus to go over here, so I will do my best to explain it. As well, I'm gonna pop up a video um, for anybody that may have a T3i, T2i, or T3i on. 
uh, and it kind of goes over how to how to work with the flash the flash control settings a little bit more in depth than what I'm going to go over now. Um, things are a little bit different in the Canon uh, T6i, so bear with me. And if it's some some things aren't answered, uh, click on this video and it should go over a few more things and explain a few more things to you guys. So let's get started with explaining flash control. Let me hit menu again. All right, so we're going to start with uh, flash firing. We're going to, of course, have that enabled. If you want it, you can disable it, and then you won't have anything except for external flash, right? So we're going to go and enable it, though, because we want to go over all the cool things that it does. Okay, so you have ETTL metering evaluated. So you have evaluated or average. I like to keep it at evaluated, it's up to you. Flash sync speed. Okay, so you can control, like if you wanted to set it to a 200 seconds fixed, so you're not gonna get that weird looking uh, black line that goes through your photo if you aren't doing hyper sync. Uh, you can set it at 1 20th to 1 60th of a second auto. I'm just gonna leave it in straight auto for now. Build in flash settings. So we're going to go on and open up the flash. You remember there's a little button up at the top. We talked about that in the, oh, I think I hit the preview function button. So let me just hit this. There we go. All right. So I'm going to go on and turn the flash on. Again, there's a button right next to the flash right here. We went over that in the first video. And so you can set it up to normal firing, easy wireless or custom. Now the easy wireless and custom functions are going to be working with the external flashes like this 430EX, which we're going to go over here in a minute, and all the cool things that it can do with this camera. But let's just look at normal firing for now. So you can set up to first or second curtain sync. Um, if you don't know what second curtain is and you don't use, have never used second curtain, I highly suggest is keep it first curtain, second curtains for specific situations, and then you can work with your exposure composition. Now, if I want to switch to, and we're going to go over easy fire, easy wireless, but really custom is where we want to sit at. So if I want to go over the custom wireless functions, I can switch it to that and I can pick my flash mode here and I can do ETTL or manual. I like to do manual. I'd like to have full control over what I'm doing. Uh, now you can set it where, so this is gonna be set up to wirelessly talk to my 430EX here. And it will wirelessly talk to this. This will flash, your flash will actually flash, but it won't actually put out any real light to affect your shot. It will just control the 430EX. Now if you wanna have both and you wanna fire the 430EX and the on-camera flash to both put out their light to get the shot, you have that option. Usually, I don't need the on-camera flash, I just wanna use it to sync up with the 430EX flash and have that do all my work for me. Um, so this is kind of getting, getting around using uh, external transmitters and receivers like these guys right here. It's getting around that, um, which is really nice because you can control your flash and you can set it up in groups. And I'm gonna show you that here in a second. So you have channels, you can set up your channels one through four. Um, the flash that I have on the 430X today is gonna to be set up at channel one um, and it's going to be uh, channel one firing group B. You can put it all, so my firing group is going to be, you could set A and B or you could set all firing groups. So you can split up the firing groups if you need to. And then you can actually control your flash output one-fourth, one-half, full, as you guys can see. And we'll keep it at one-fourth. So that's really cool. You have, you're able to really control that external flash very nicely and quickly. Again, if you wanted to have both the on-camera flash and your external flash uh, both go off at the same time, you have that option as well. And then you have your flash output, and you have the two different ones um, depending on your on-camera or external. So let's go back to the top and let's go to the easy wireless. And you just have a few less functions with the easy wireless. As you can see, you can't do as much, um, but you still have a little bit more manual control than your normal firing, which is going to just fire uh, 
So that's, that's going to just fire your built-in flash here. So let's move down to external flash. Now it's not going to let me do anything because I don't have an external flash connected. So we're going to put this down. We're going to turn on the external flash and then we're going to throw it on the camera. And now we have the external flash set up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset uh, my lens and so that you can see the external flash and you can see the uh, the functions in the back. And this is this is one of my new favorite things. I'm, I don't know if this is on the T5i, but you really have control over your external flash like never before, um, which is just fantastic. You can really control everything on your external flash through the camera and you don't have to go through the menu settings on your external flash. So let me reset and I'll be right back with you guys. I have now put the external flash on. It's set at the top of the camera as you guys can see and hopefully this will be, you'll be able to see both screens right here as they work together. So let's go into the flash settings. So I can change it from ETTL and I can pick my zoom. So if I want to set at 24 millimeters, 24 millimeters is going to be like a wide range. So what, what that means is, is that, we'll just set this to the side for a second. When you shoot, it's going to be more of a, a wider, wider range like this, as you guys can see. So if it's going to shoot, it's going to be wider. At 105 millimeters, your range is going to be more direct, where it's going to shoot the beam straight forward. just to explain that. So usually you're going to be shooting multiple people. You want to want the 24 millimeter if you're shooting one specific subject and you're targeting a certain part of their body, like their head or from their upper body, from their waist to through their head, then you might want to use the, let's go back to, you might want to use the 105 setting. Or you can leave it at automatic if you don't know really what you're doing. And again, you can do the touch screen if you feel the need to. Uh, you can set it between first curtain, second curtain, and then, oops, and then high speed synchronization where it actually uses a faster shutter speed um, with the flash, which is really nice. And then you can do your flash exposure compensation if you need to do that. Again, I don't really use ETTL. That's pretty much the automatic. ETTL is the automatic setting for your Canon flash. So uh, again, uh, we're going to set it to manual. And you'll notice if you're, if you're watching the flash up here, every time I change, it's changing actually on the flash. It's talking to it and controlling the flash completely. So I'm not having to go up to these buttons and do all this extra uh, control of it. Again, it's pretty easy to switch your modes on the on the flash, especially if it's second nature to you like it is to me. So again, we're going to go back to manual. And in manual, again, you have full control functionality. Again, we're going to put it at 24 millimeters. Uh, and now I can, ex I can pick my flash output level, which is like how much power. Um, at 164th, um, that's going to be the weakest amount of light that it can put out, the smallest amount. Where at a 1-1, it's going to put out full full flash. Again, though, the uh, the more powerful the flash is, the output, the faster it's going to run through your batteries. So uh, I do a lot of event photography. I find that one eighth at an f nine at a thousand ISO with a shutter speed about one twenty five is is a really good uh, baseline for most event photography, especially if it's in a darker situation. Like uh, I'll do like go to like some dances and dinners where it's lower lit. All right, so let's go back out of there. External flash settings. So now we're going to go over the actual uh, having very specific settings that you can you can set up. And again, give me a second, I'm going to readjust the lens and we're going to get a close up of this so we can go over uh, those functions. Now let's go over the custom functions. So right here, and it, it explains it right here. If you see right here where underneath it will say, this is the headline, and underneath of it you will see where it says auto power on and off. Um, you, I have that disabled, um, but you can set it to, you can hit the set button right here, and then you can enable it or disable it. 
um, on zero, distance, indicator, display. So if you can set it to meter or feet, depending on if you use, depending on which system that you use, uh, pretty much if you're from America or the rest of the world. <laughs> so uh, again, modeling flash, you can switch that. As you can see, you have a couple different options or you can just completely uh, disable it. Test firing with auto flash. So you can have it when you test fire, when you hit the, there's a little pilot button on the flash, and when you test fire it, and you can have it at 132, which is going to, 132, which is going to put out less flash and save your batteries more, where the, you could set it to full output if you want to really, or if you just want to mess with somebody and just blind them, you know, set it to full output, walk up and flash them. And I mean the camera type flash, not the flash type flash, ladies. All right, so next is AF assistant beam firing. Again, you can have that enabled or disabled. Um, I have that, of course, enabled. Auto zoom for sensor size, uh, enabled. Slave auto power off timer. So mainly uh, if you're in slave mode, you can set it to 60 minutes or 10 minutes. Uh, slave auto power off cancel. Again, eight hours or one hour. Flash range aperture info. Maximum distance or aperture display. I choose maximum distance. And now we're back to the front. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hit menu. We've completed the first section. So we've gone through all the flash functions. Again, uh, I'll pop up that video once more. And that goes over some of the flash functions from the T3i. Um, a little bit more in depth that are similar to this. And if you guys have any comments or questions, of course, you know, send me a message, uh, mediaunlocked101 at gmail.com, or message me through YouTube, or leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to answer any of those questions if uh, I did not make myself clear with the flash control functions, because uh, it is a little more in-depth, and it can be confusing, especially if you're just starting off um, as a photographer uh, using external flashes. Moving on to our next section, uh, we will start with exposure composition. This is great for HDR photography, where you can actually pick how far, how you can take, you can set up to take three different shots at different exposures. So you would get your baseline, uh, which you consider a properly exposed photo, and then you would have it under and overexposed, combine the three, and make what's called a high dynamic range photo. Um, I use this all the time. I have a complete series on how to do this. Um, if you guys are ever interested, again, I'll add another video to pop up if you're interested in learning a little bit about HDR photography. I have a whole three or four part series really breaking down a high dynamic range photography and how to get nice shots all the way down to the editing. Um, so that's what that does. And so what you would do is you would pick it and you could hit set and it would be set and then it would take three different exposures, three different photos at different exposures. Hit OK, go back, auto light optimizer. This is not this is not valid in the manual setting, so don't worry about it. Again, everything I'm talking about here is I'm really basing it off uh, if you're in the manual setting, the manual dial. Custom white balance, again, uh, you can set, what you can do is you can take a picture of like a 16% gray card or white or get what you consider close to the proper white balance, take a picture of that, and you could use that to set your white balance if I wanted to. And I could set my white balance based off of this picture, but then my white balance would be all wacky. Uh, white balance color shift. Um, you can control your white balance shift if you want. As well, you can use the dial up at the top, and then you can, of course, uh, you can hit the delete button. We'll go back in, you hit the delete button, and it will bring it back to its original settings. So you can play around with that if you're interested. Color space, sRGB, Adobe RGB, I use sRGB. Picture styles, picture styles are awesome. Um, what they do is they allow you to uh, control different looks when you're taking pictures. Most of you probably shoot in the auto or standard picture style. Uh, there's a portrait landscape. I always shoot in neutral. Shooting in neutral will give me the uh, biggest benefit of editing as far as controlling it with the raw photo. I have more control over getting the photo exactly where I want it at if I shoot at neutral. Faithful monochrome, which is pretty much black and white. And then you can set up your own, your own picture styles if you want. All you have to do is hit, and we will hit uh, info. So again, we'll go back, hit menu to go back. And so let's say I want to set up my own picture style. I can hit info and I can go in and control my sharpness, contrast, saturation, and color tone. 
Um, I'll show you what one of the pre-made ones look like. So let's go like neutral is going to be, that's what neutral looks like, bringing the sharpness way down and everything right there in the middle. And let's look at like a standard info. And again, standard has a little more sharpness where everything set to zero. So that's what your picture style is, and that's what it's used for. Um, picture style is awesome. So in here is metering mode. Now, um, I'm not going to dive into how metering mode works. What I'm going to do is, um, right now, I'm going to pop up uh, an image. And if you guys would like to pause the video for a minute, feel free to. And this image is going to uh, show you um, how meter modes work. It's kind of like a cheat sheet, in a manner of speaking. So you guys can read, look at this image, read it. And uh, and hopefully it will you'll get the understanding of metering modes a little bit better. Um, so anyways, again, uh, feel free to pause the video if you haven't already. Take a look at this. Uh, metering modes can be very important depending on what type of photography um, you are doing. But I'm not going to take the time to really go over it right now. Moving on. Dust data, dust data delete. Obtain data for, for removing dust using software. Refer to manual for details. So this helps uh, with dust, well, deleting dust. Uh, you would take a, take a photo and you would do some work with, with software within the computer. Again, I've never really gotten around to making a video for this. Maybe one day I will. Um, really, for the most part, you really don't need to worry about this. ISO auto max. So you can set your ISO to a max of 64. Um, anything over 1600 and really at 1600, you're really going to get some noisy pictures. Um, that's just part of having a crop censored sensor. Long exposure noise reduction. I keep this off. Mainly what this does is if you're taking exposure longer than one second, it helps reduce the noise. Uh, a lot of people, uh, especially if you get on the internet and do a lot of blog reading, will say that it actually makes it worse, not better. Uh, I don't find it useful, um, so I always leave this in the off setting. Um, same thing with uh, high ISO; it does a like a noise or limited noise reduction. Um, again, both these settings kind of alter your raw files a little bit, and uh, it doesn't make the file as uh, uncompressed in a manner of speaking. So again, this is another option. I leave it off. Some people may tell you to turn it on depending on what you're doing. Uh, but for anything that I've ever done, both of these options I leave off. Aspect ratio, I keep it at 16.9. You can change it if you want. And then anti-flicker. Uh, I don't really understand why they put this in unless you're shooting uh, pictures of like a time lapse or something. And it's kind of taking the, the, the flicker out. Um, again, I leave this disabled because that's another thing I can do in post. I can do a better job of it than the camera's probably going to do it inside of the of the camera. Moving on, live view shoot. So uh, it's shooting with live view mode on. You can change your settings, see everything how it is. Uh, actually, I'm going to show you what that looks like because I've got it enabled. So I can have my live view on and let's see if I've got my lens cap on the lens. It's trying to focus right now. Um, I've got this set too. That's my focus point right there. And I just, I just set it up to where I could just take a picture by doing that. But again, we've got live view on and I can change um, my settings in live view uh, as needed. So, um, and actually I'll show you some stuff here in a second. It's going to try to focus wherever. So the lens is set up to try to focus on wherever this is, as you can see. And now it's going to snap a picture of it. Um, so we can bring this down so we can get the 430X in a little bit better. Now it's trying to focus and it's not really doing a great job of it. All right, so your flex zone. Um, so I usually use face plus tracking, but you do have these flex zones. They work in live view specifically. So this is your first flex zone. We'll go back out. And if you notice, there's a big, huge box, and so it's gonna try to focus on everything within the box. Um, and what we'll do is we'll hit ISO. And this function is not available during live view shooting for some reason. So it should be, it should allow me to. Here we go. And we'll bring this up so it's a little bit easier to hopefully it will be able to focus. So you can't you cannot do ISO in live view for some reason. Oh, there it is. I was hitting the wrong button. My apologies, guys. 
So let's bring the ISO. Let's just bring it up 64, even though it's going to be super noisy. And I can bring my f-stop up a tad bit higher. And this will do a little bit better job of focusing. So you have the two different flex zones. Again, are based to the little tiny box versus a larger box. And what it will do is as you try to move, move the camera around, it's going to try to focus on what's ever in that box. Um, it works much better in the flex zone with the 1AF, um, the smaller box like this right here. It's going to do a much better job of focusing um, using that. Again, it's going to try to focus on anything that's within that box. And you can move it around. And once you move it around, it will try to autofocus and it will take the picture. So that's what Flex Zone does. Again, I don't use Flex Zone. That's for, both the Flex Zones are for Live View Mode. I use the tracking. And we'll go on and turn Live View Mode off. Continuous autofocus. I have that enabled. Again, if you don't want it to. So you see how it was uh, constantly trying to autofocus um, while I was moving the camera. You can disable that. So if I disable that and I go up to here and then I go back out, it won't continuously try to autofocus. But if I just hit it, now it's going to try to autofocus and take the shot. So uh, again, that's you can have that enabled or disabled. I'm going to leave it disabled. I don't really need it. Uh, I can do all the focusing I need through my view viewfinder instead of live view mode. So we'll turn live view mode back off. Touch shutter. Um, I leave that enabled. And I believe that has to do with touching the screen. So uh, again, I can disable that and disable. Uh, we can put the continuous autofocus back on. And we can go to the smaller flex zone. We can go to live view mode. And then it's not going to take a picture. Right now, all it's going to do is it's going to focus on where I tell it to focus. But if I go back in here and turn on touch shutter enabled, now when I do that, it's going to focus and take a shot. Except it can't focus for some reason. And it's, so maybe if I bring it back out a little bit further. So again, uh, disable that. Uh, continuous autofocus, disable, and I'm going to bring it back to face plus tracking, which is going to, uh, it will track um, a face or whatever subject you kind of pick. Grid display, you have a couple different grid displays. Again, I do not use the grid displays. I leave them off. And metering timer has to do with saving battery. Um, I just have that set to eight seconds. It really doesn't really play uh, an effect into your shots. So let's go over the blue menus. Protect images. Um, you can set, you can protect specific images you want. You have a bunch of folders. Again, most of the stuff I'm going to run through real quick. I don't use any of the blue blue things. And uh, for most people, unless you don't do uh, editing um, on a computer or you're very meticulous with setting up stars, um, I find that that these two menus I have no use for, and they're just time consuming. Rotate image, so you can rotate your image if you want. Uh, erase images, print order, photo book setup, creative filters. We'll talk a little bit about those. So I can go in and set up a creative filter if I want. And I hit the set button here. And now I can have the different creative filters. If I want to turn this into like, uh, let's see here, uh, black and white with grainy, I can hit set. And it will turn it black and white, and then I can hit set. And then if I want to save it, that's how the file will stay. So you have those creative filters. If you want to use them, we'll hit menu again. So you have a couple of different ones. You can resize your photo. Um, moving on to the next menu, cropping. You can crop it. You can rate your photo. So if you want to rate, uh, if you know specifically how you want to rate it, you can rate your photo. I do all that type of stuff in Aperture. I go in and rate my photos and then edit them from there. You can set up a slideshow. Uh, now the image jump thing is something you may you may want. So you have your, your dial right up here at the top. And you can set it to jump so many images at a time. Uh, I have it set to 10 or you can just have it set to 1. Really that's probably the best way. So that way when you go out and you go to pictures, it will just do one photo at a time. 
where if you had it set to 10, it would jump 10 at a time. And there isn't 10 images in there for it to jump around, but you guys get the idea. I'm gonna keep it at one. Uh, AF point display, and I just had that disabled. Histogram display, brightness, RGB. Um, I'm gonna leave it where it's at. Control over HDMI, disabled. Again, you can get clean HDMI out with the T6i, which is pretty sweet. And that is finishing video part two. And there will be a link at the end of this video for part three, which in part three, we're gonna go over all three wrenches, four wrenches and the star. And, um, and then we'll jump into the video settings in part four. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, if you guys are interested in purchasing this camera, there'll be a link down below in the description bar. Any of that type of stuff really helps me out a lot um, to keep this channel running. Hey guys, if you'd like to check out our website where we have all kinds of fun and exciting blogs, videos, and extra information that isn't on our YouTube page, click right here. If you'd like to talk to us or contact us and kind of take a look at all the different stuff that we have going on, um, we've kind of funneled it all through our Facebook. You can hit our Facebook page right here and follow us or like us. Now, if you like to look at cool pictures and behind the scenes stuff, we do that on Instagram right here. So go on and follow us on Instagram. And of course, we've got our cute little bird right here, Mr. Twitter, and you can follow us as we do our short tweets.